Amazon announced Friday that it's buying the upscale grocery chain Whole Foods for $13.7 billion. Hello everyone, my name is Anthony Avila. James, Rachel, Jean, Daniel and I will be speaking to you about Amazon's acquisition of Whole Foods. Most people are already very familiar with Amazon. It was founded in 1994 by Jeff Bezos and Bobby Washington and focused primarily on selling books, videos and music. It has since quickly turned into the world's largest e-commerce and online realtor and one of the planet's most powerful companies. It has also expanded into cloud computing and digital streaming, among other avenues. It is now one of only a handful of companies that has a valuation of over $1 trillion. Whole Foods was founded in Austin, Texas when John Mackey and Renee Lawson Hardy, owners of Safer Way Natural Foods, and Craig Weller and Mark Skiles, owners of owners of Clarksville Natural Grocery, decided that the natural foods industry was ready for a supermarket format. They opened their original store in 1980 with a staff of 19 people. Whole Foods began expanding in the mid-80s, first in Texas and New Orleans, and later in California. In the 1990s, the company began acquiring other natural food chains throughout the country, and in the early 2000s, it acquired stores in Canada and the United Kingdom. Amazon has been no stranger when it comes to acquiring established companies to either expand its product lines or increase its company's efficiencies. However, its acquisition of Whole Foods drew attention for both its sales price and the distinctness of the company from Amazon's previous acquisitions. At the time of the Whole Foods acquisition in 2017, the largest previous amount Amazon had paid to acquire a company was $1.2 billion for Zappos in 2009. That amount was shattered by the $13.7 billion price tag that Amazon paid for Whole Foods. Amazon chose to approach the grocery store chain at an opportune time. Whole Foods was experiencing some setbacks that sent from declining sales for, from six straight quarters, and it began closing some locations and abandoned its plan to expand to 1,200 stores across the United States. In 2017, Whole Foods was relatively small compared to its competitors, its 456 stores were dwarfed by Walmart's 5,352 locations, Kroger's 2,782 stores, and Albertsons' 2,328 locations. So, why did Amazon choose Whole Foods? Well, there are a couple possible reasons for this. First is that Amazon wanted to acquire customer data. With the data, they could tailor the grocery shopping experience to the individual, learn the grocery and buying habits and patterns and preferences of its customers, find correlations between purchases of different products and categories, and with that information, they could build analytical models to predict what, when, and how much customers want. Next was the shopping base already provided to them by Whole Foods, which is typically more affluent, with customers on average having $1,000 of disposable income per month. They also wanted to get control of the private product brand of Whole Foods 365. With this, they could become more vertically integrated. The acquisition also helped address one of Amazon's weaknesses, which was fresh food delivery. And finally, the stores provided a testing ground for Amazon to test products, services, price points, interactions, and to better merge online and offline sales. Hi everyone, this is Jean. Uh, the first, what did Amazon hope to uh, uh, accomplish? Number one, a large majority of the consumer, 89%, are more likely to buy the product from the Amazon than uh, other immersion sites. 96% of the all uh, Primers members agree. Most of brands face two serious uphill battles if they will Amazon as will third competitors. You can find the cheaper product on Amazon, then it's the physical stores. Amazon Shopping is the convenient, it's the com um, compiling place to shop. It's due to trust run place to shop. Number two, primer are wildly loyal. All consumers who uh, belong to Amazon Primer nearby 84% to buy the product online once a week or more fre uh, frequently and the nearby 74% shop online at least a few every few weeks. Three, Amazon is uh, uh, indispensable uh, throughout the shopping journey. Amazon is uh, now the place to consumer go to for uh, help to their the purchasing decision. 
from the initial research and then to reading the rewrite and then checking the price. Number four, consumers are looking for recognizable brand on Amazon. Nearby 74% of the consumer cited the brand name as, as an important factor. When slide the product, and 59% is those high value daily Amazon shoppers decided brand name. It's very important factor very slight the product. So Amazon's diversification into the grocery business has nothing to do with the brick and mortar stores that Whole Foods is known for. It has to do with selling online. In order for Amazon to continue increasing its revenue, it must continue to find more and more products to sell online. Amazon already sells a seemingly infinite amount of products online. However, there are some major markets that Amazon is either not in yet or Amazon has gained in entry into and is trying to gain market share. Most major grocery stores have already made their way to the online shopping platform and they also deliver groceries to their customers. Amazon is already a huge force online and already delivers to customers as well. So getting involved in the grocery game is a good logical next step for Amazon. When Amazon first acquired Whole Foods, the percentage of groceries sold online was low, and this was Amazon's opportunity to gain entry into this market. There is a barrier to online grocery shopping. Customers like to pick their own groceries, especially what is called the Big Five. Meat, chicken, fish, fruits and vegetables are the grocery products that consumers would like to pick on their own. And this is the main reason Amazon acquired Whole Foods. Amazon wants to figure out the consumer mindset. Once the consumer mindset is figured out, Amazon can then begin converting customers into online grocery shoppers. Our first recommendation is to allow Whole Foods to retain some autonomy in their organizational structure. Whole Foods' decentralized culture resulted in high prices due to non-standardization and inefficient practices. Following the acquisition, a centralized system was implemented, along with standardization of the store's layout and product offerings. This created a lot of dissatisfaction with the employees who felt they lost their autonomy and ability to meet the needs of their loyal customers. They were also held to very high performance standards. Culture change is not inevitable following an Amazon acquisition. Let us look at their acquisition of Zappos, which was already known for its exceptional customer service and unique culture. They follow the Holacracy organizational model, which gives each employee a voice and grants them decision-making authority. Holacracy is a self-managing organizational structure which can increase responsiveness since employees do not need to seek approval before taking action. Zappos is allowed to stay independent and keep their unique culture as long as they continue to meet performance standards, which they do. Through the structured empowerment model, the Whole Foods employees can regain some autonomy and freedom if they are given clear limits and guidelines. In this model, the employees need access to resources and information necessary to do their job, opportunities for personal growth, and support to work efficiently and effectively. This will lead to employee engagement and increased performance. Whole Foods must still meet the performance standards, but the focus should be on results instead of process. Amazon should implement the 80-20 rule to allow the employees and in individual stores to bring in some regional specialties and add personality back to the store. But how do we help Whole Foods improve their performance? Through appreciative inquiry, where the focus is on what is working well, we can reframe the question from why Whole Foods is not meeting the performance standards to in what areas are they meeting those standards. Instead of changing the process and behaviors which are identified as the problem, we will focus on the successes which need to be replicated and encouraged. Amazon and Whole Foods will need to create a compelling vision for the future state of the organization which the employees can support and help motivate them to perform well. Our second recommendation is on store expansion. Amazon Go and Amazon Go Grocery are the cashierless stores where the customer enters the store using a QR code from their app, puts the items in their bag or cart, and just walks out. The shoppers are tracked by cameras throughout the store and receive a receipt after they leave. These stores offer mainstream brands and products not 
found in Whole Foods and add to the mix of shopping options available for customers. Our recommendation is that Amazon should utilize this cashierless technology in the Whole Foods markets to improve the customer experience and allow the employee in the store to act as a key touch point for the customer interaction and provide exceptional customer service. And Amazon needs to use this customer data, including what is gathered from online shopping to determine where to build the next Whole Foods market. Hello, I'll be outlining two final recommendations for team four, both of which center around the company culture for Amazon and Whole Foods. And this here lies our team's next recommendation to leverage the Amazon Prime customer base. We know Amazon's Prime membership boasts over 1 million users. If Amazon Prime was a country, it would have 8 million more people than Spain. As Amazon expands the list of benefits and values for Prime, do you wonder if Amazon's brand is being diluted? After all, Amazon Prime affords you the opportunity to have free shipping, free music, video streaming, file, cloud, photo uploading, audiobooks, and the list literally goes on and on. Is Amazon building a schizophrenic brand disconnected from its business? In short, we would argue no. Jim Collins presents an idea that great companies develop their core competencies to a point that they reach operational excellence. He calls this the flywheel. Once the flywheel is moving, greater and greater efficiencies can be achieved by the company. Amazon has built an amazing product and distribution network. Now with Amazon Prime, millions of members, it has the ability to build loyalty and expand that core business to more customers. Whole Foods Market is simply the next step to building a bigger loyal customer base and more efficiently moving that Amazon flywheel. It's time Amazon builds on that knowledge to open new stores, highly customized product marketing to prime users, and synchronize the benefits between the brick and mortar market with Amazon's enormous eco, uh, <coughs> ecosystem of e-commerce. For our final recommendation, Amazon's needs must meet the customer's needs and continue to build loyalty, specifically through fresh food delivery. Management author Peter Drucker famously taught companies that they must know who their customer is in order to truly meet their needs and expand market share. This is not an easy process, but Amazon is the market leader in customer-centric service and the collection of data. Through Amazon, Whole Foods has the ability to leverage data and build a greater following. We know Amazon has installed delivery lockers at most of its Whole Foods locations already and began expanding their Amazon Fresh services in many markets. In 2019, Amazon removed the separate Amazon Fresh membership price and included Amazon Fresh benefits directly in the Prime membership model. Again, leveraging loyal loyalty and connecting customers to its core base. Simply put, Amazon and Whole Foods need to get this right. By expanding and gaining market share in the fresh delivery space, the acquisition will go down in the history books as a success. Here's how Amazon can achieve this recommendation. First, the current Whole Foods market dis distribution contract that it has with United Natural Foods Incorporated needs to be sunsetted intentionally in 2025 when the contract is up for renewal. Allow Whole Amazon to resume complete control of the national distribution network of Whole Foods Market. This will provide Amazon the leverage to build out an even more robust fresh food storage and delivery supply chain that not only services Whole Foods Market, but also Amazon Fresh and Amazon Go. Secondly, Whole Foods Market can help solve the pr produce problem. Fact is, many people do not want strangers choosing their produce. However, the Whole Foods Market has a reputation for high quality organic produce with great team members and employees, and Amazon can leverage this reputation to solve this perception challenge. So to wrap this up for you, there are a multitude of potential reasons for Amazon's acquisition of Whole Foods, ranging from data acquisition, merging online and offline sales, and utilizing the store locations as testing grounds. For Amazon and Whole Foods to get the most out of the acquisition, 
Whole Foods needs to retain some autonomy in its organizational structure. Amazon needs to utilize its cashierless technology in Whole Foods markets. Amazon also needs to leverage its prime customer base and work to build loyalty through fresh food delivery. And we'd like to leave you with this quote from Jeff Bezos. One thing I tell people is if you're going to do anything new or innovative, you have to be willing to be misunderstood. We hope you enjoyed our presentation.